Hey landlords, Nicole Purvey here, real estate investor and the founder of the Better Than Success Real Estate League. So one of our members of the Better Than Success Real Estate League hit me up and was like, hey, I need to run something by you. My aunt owns a property and she doesn't want to deal with it anymore. She doesn't want to deal with the upkeep. She doesn't deal with, want to deal with the payments. And I want to buy the property from her. I want to take over the property, but I don't want to come out of my pocket. Another variation of that question is, hey, I want to buy a property from an older family member of mine. I don't want to wait until this person passes away and, you know, have to deal with probate or whatever. I want to take over it now. They don't really want to deal with it. I want to take it over now. How can I do it? without coming out of my pocket and just kind of like transfer the responsibility of this property over to me. So I love this question because you can get super creative with how you solve this problem, but I'm gonna give you three very popular ways that you can do it. The first way you can do it is you can do it with something called subject to. Subject to is a very controversial way of acquiring assets, but in this instance, it is very beneficial. Now, I'm going to explain to you how subject to works, but I don't recommend it for everyone. I actually don't even like doing it. I've never done a subject to property because there's so much gray area with it, but let me tell you how it works. Okay, the first thing before you even understand how it works is you need to understand that the mortgage to a property and the property itself are two separate things. Most people believe that you don't own a property until you pay the mortgage off, and that is not true. That is how cars work when you get a car note. But when you buy a property, the day that you go to closing, you own the property, whether you get a mortgage or not right? Whether there's liens on it, doesn't matter. You own the property. Now, most people also say, I'll go to the bank and get a mortgage. The reality is you give a mortgage. When you own the property, you give a mortgage to the bank. So any normal situation, you go to buy a property, you know, you own a house that you live in. When you closed, you bought that property and you gave a mortgage to the bank so that they have first lien position on the property if you don't actually end up paying the mortgage. They have a first lien position on the property. That's how it works. Now, because these two things are separate and you technically own it, what you can do, what people do who buy property subject to is they go to someone and they say, hey, you don't want this property. You don't want this payment. What I will do is I will buy the property from you. The mortgage will stay in your name and I will get it cash flowing and I will pay the mortgage for you. Most people ask, okay, in the mortgage, there is a due on sale clause that when you sell the property, the mortgage is due. The way around that is you set up a trust, but you name the trust, trust of the original owner. So let's say in this instance, aunt's name is Mary Smith. So you set up a trust called Trust of Mary Smith, but you make yourself, you the buyer, the new buyer, the beneficiary of the trust. So when the bank, if the bank were to ever see anything, if they were to get any triggers, the, all they're seeing is, oh, this property is going from the owner being Mary Smith to Trust of Mary Smith. <laughs> no issues there. I'm sure banks are getting hit to this now, but <laughs> no issues there. So now you own the property, but the thing about doing subject to is in order to keep a good name out in these streets is you have to make sure that you still make the payments because the mortgage is still going to be in Mary Smith's name. So if you have a relative that you want to take over their property, you can absolutely do this. This is a great way, especially if they just want to get out of the property. This is a great way to actually do this. I know people that are very, very close to me that have successfully done subject to, and they've also had situations where they've gone awry. So buyer beware. <laughs> okay, the uh, next way to do it is something very similar to subject to, which is called contract for deed. It's a much cleaner, cleaner way of doing this. 
you can essentially lease the property from Mary for a year with some payments or not necessarily lease it. You can do, you can, you can buy it from her with a, like an owner financing type of thing where you're paying her some set amount of money close to, or maybe a little bit below what rents are or whatever. Some amount that you guys both agree on is probably going to have to be a little over the mortgage so that Aunt Mary can cover her mortgage. And so you enter into this arrangement with her where you're paying for the property over time, right? Let's say her mortgage payment is a thousand dollars and you say, okay, Aunt Mary, I'm going to pay you $1,200 a month. You take this agreement with her and you go and record it at your municipality's courthouse. It has to be recorded. Once it's recorded for a year and you make good payments for a year, make those payments on time for one year, now you have what's called equitable interest in the property. Because you have equitable interest in the property, you can now go and refinance it out of Aunt Mary's name into your name. Now, there are a lot of variables here. How much equity does Aunt Mary have in the property? What's the mortgage balance? You know, what's the ARV? All of these things that go, but just want to get your wheels turning if this is your situation. And I want you to do a little more due diligence and kind of walk down that road to figure out if this is the right option for you. Contract for D is a very similar to subject to, it's just a lot cleaner. Okay, you can refinance it out of Aunt Mary's name and into your name. Then the last option, which is what I would try to do, this is only going to work if there's a lot of equity in the property where you can acquire the property without any uh, cash changing for 65% of the ARV or less, where you don't have to worry about anything. So this is what you can do. You can buy it from her using a hard money loan. Now, remember, hard money loans, we at BTS Funding, we can get you a hard money loan up to 100% of acquisition and rehab costs, but no more than 65% of the ARV. So if the property, for to make it simple, if the property is, if the ARV is $100,000 and Aunt Mary owns $65,000 or less on the property, we can buy it from Aunt Mary for $65,000. You could potentially put some buffer in there. Um, there's even a bunch more stuff that you can do to make sure you don't, you can't come to the closing table, but I'm just, I mean, you don't have to come bring any cash to the closing table, but I'm going to make this super duper simple. Okay. So you can do that and then immediately refinance out of it into a traditional 30 year mortgage. So if you do the hard money, you're going to have interest payments that are relatively high, but immediately refinance out of it into a traditional mortgage. Now, this is why you would do this versus going ahead and just going to buy it. Because if you buy it in a traditional mortgage or commercial mortgage, even if it's non-owner occupied, most banks, the best you can get if you go to outright buy it is they say, we will finance 80% of the ARV or the appraised value of the property or 80% of the acquisition price, whichever is lower. So even if the property appraises for $100,000 and you're buying it for Aunt Mary for 65, the bank, if you go to get a 30 year mortgage, they will only finance 80% of the 65,000. So you're going to need to come to the table with $12,000. That's the 20%. But if you buy it using hard money, oh, great. I, this property has some equity in it. That's awesome. Aunt Mary, I'm going to buy it from you at the $65,000. Aunt Mary, remember, she just wants to be done with the property. I'm going to buy it from you at the $65,000. Hard money will give you $65,000 because of 65% 60, of the ARV. And then you can go to a regular bank and refinance it. Now, when you go to the regular bank and refinance in a 30-year mortgage, they will give you, it depends, but they will refinance up to 75. You might, there's some banks that will do 80% of the ARV. So you bought it for 65 
You got a $65,000 mortgage with the hard money lender. Remember, it appraised for $100,000. Then you can go and refinance it with a regular bank for eighty. dollars if you find a bank that will do it for 80,000. Again, we're leaving out some closing costs and some financing costs and, and points that you're gonna have to pay both times when you buy and when you refinance. So you gotta kind of work out the math yourself, but that is how you can do it without bringing any money out of pocket when you wanna transfer ownership, but still keep the property in the family and Aunt Mary is tied. She tied, <laughs> she tied. She just don't wanna deal with the house no more. All right. If you have questions, put them in the comments. Don't forget, if you have questions just like this, you don't have to be a member. You can join us every Thursday at 7 p.m. for our live real estate Q&As. I am on almost all of them. And so if you have questions for me, you can join us. They're live. They're free. Go to betterthansuccess.com forward slash events. I also take the recording and I put it on the Better Than Success podcast. So you can search Better Than Success on all platforms and look for the Better Than Success podcast and you can listen to our latest Q&A sessions. And also one last thing, guys, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Hit that subscribe button. Alrighty, until next time, happy entrepreneuring.